So from the last video, we have this scene where we're looking at the side of the cube. This is a three-dimensional scene that we've transformed into a two-dimensional image. However, that doesn't look like it's 3D because we're looking directly at the side of the box. Looks like we're actually looking at a square. So I want to do something a little more interesting. Let me bring up the other demo program. And hopefully this looks familiar. I'll get it into view. Recall that we placed a cube into the scene and then we translated the cube down the negative z direction by negative three units. And then we projected the cube right in front of the camera so then the camera sees sees this. And that's exactly the scene that we're seeing in in our view. In fact, let me bring that up. That hopefully <laughs> hopefully you can see, yeah, we did that, and that's a good job. So I want to do something a little more interesting. I want to rotate the cube so it looks like it's more of a 3D scene. If we go back to uh, this view and pull this out like that, we can we have three options for rotate. Well, actually, we have an infinite number of options. But the basics one, basic one is we can rotate around the x-axis, the cube's x-axis. Recall that the positive x-axis comes this direction. We can rotate around the y-axis which comes directly out of the top of the cube, or we can rotate around the cube's z-axis, the positive z-axis, going in this direction. So let me grab these sliders here. This is the x, or the red vector. This is the y, the green vector. And this is the z. And let's just rotate around the x. You see the cube rotating around that red vector. Let's rotate around the Y. The cube will now rotate around the green vector. And then we can rotate around the Z. The cube will rotate around the blue vector. But that's not very interesting to the camera to rotate around the Z. If we go back to the camera view, it looks like we're just rotating a square instead of rotating a box. I think rotating around the Y would be more interesting. Or rotating around the X. I actually think we'll do the X because the top of the cube is a lot more colorful than the sides. So let's roll with that. Recall or remember this number, 54. That's the number of degrees we want to rotate around the x-axis. I believe if I grab the slider and roll it all the way out, I'll get to 360 degrees, which means we just rotated the cube one full circle. And that's not a very interesting scene again. So now I can't even remember what number we had there. Was it 50, 54? Yeah, 54. We'll, we'll go with 54. Let's go back to our code and bring this. Well, we'll close that for now. We have this model transform matrix, which we did a translate. But really, this is the translation matrix, isn't it? I can say this is the translation matrix. Then we need a rotation matrix. Mate4 rotation matrix gets GLM rotate. And we have to pass in an initial matrix again. I'll show you how we can optimize that in just a few minutes. Uh, the angle, I believe, was 54 degrees. And we have to pass the vector to rotate around. And this is why I, why I say we can rotate around any direction. We're not limited to XYZ. We could pass a vector that's pointing any arbitrary direction. But we wanted to rotate around the x-axis. So I'll say vec3. Give me the x-axis. Obviously, I can't say x and type f at the same time. And nothing in the y-axis, nothing in the z-axis. And then we get errors here because this needs to be a point zero f as well. So now we have a rotation matrix, a translation matrix, a projection matrix. So you may initially think, oh, we got to pass all three of these in as uniforms to our shader code. Recall that we sent the translation matrix in here, the projection matrix in here. But one cool thing about matrices is you can combine them by multiplying them together into one matrix. For example, every vertex, we're taking this matrix and multiplying the result of the vector transformation with this. It's essentially we say, hey, Take our initial position, send it through this matrix, and then send it to through this matrix. Well, it's a lot faster to just make one matrix, and instead of every single vertice, we do all these multiplications. Instead, we just do one matrix against our vertices. So that's our goal. We don't have to pass in these separate matrices. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to call this projection matrix full transform matrix. And then now I can just say, let me uh, control shift L L and delete this and say full transform matrix times V. 
I don't have to send V through every matrix one by one, even though conceptually it helps us understand what's going on when we send the, the vertex through one by one. So now that we have full transform matrix, I can eliminate this. We need to go build that full transform matrix in our CPP file, so let's do that. I'm going to say GLM. Or I don't have to say GLM. I have the using for it. Mate4 full transform matrix gets translation matrix matrix times rotation matrix so you see I just combined all that into one and actually we can combine the projection matrix as well projection matrix times translation matrix times rotation matrix the order of these is important but I'll talk about that hopefully in the next video but either way we have our full transform matrix Need to make sure this variable, this this string here, full transform matrix. I'm going to copy this and paste it here just to be picky. We need to make sure that string matches up here. And instead of it being model transform matrix, this is full transform matrix uniform location. We no longer have this one. I can get rid of that, and I can get rid of this. I can just say GL uniform matrix for FV. Uh, let's use full transform matrix location right there. And then we want full transform matrix right here. Okay, I know that was pretty quick, but essentially what we're doing is taking all these matrices. We're doing the translation, the rotation, the projection. We combine all of them into one matrix using matrix multiplication. So now I don't need to send the vertex through one matrix at a time. Instead, I can combine all those matrices at once slam it into one matrix that's a lot faster a lot more optimal a lot less multiplications floating point multiplications and then i simply have to send this full transform matrix into my shader here's the string to identify the uniform we've seen getting uniforms in previous videos and then i say well at that location send in this matrix and then draw elements so if we did this right the view we should see is something similar to this let's control f5 this Build and run. Let's see. No errors. And look at that. We did it. We rotated our cube. So that's pretty cool. All right. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some optimizations we can do here. We're going to talk about why the order of matrix multiplication is important. And I'm also going to talk about these rotations and, and the directions regarding these rotations.